you know, the, the conventional wisdom about Kennedy is that he learned his lesson in the Bay of Pigs, and that lesson was don't listen to the CIA, take the advice of the Joint Chiefs with a grain of salt. Um, listen to your closer advisors, listen to Bobby. He really became close to Bobby Kennedy after this. Or people like Ted Sorensen, people that he'd worked with before and knew and trusted. Uh, and that this prepared him for the Cuban Missile Crisis. So then when the Cuban Missile Crisis came along during those famous 13 days, he knew to ignore the Joint Chiefs of Staff when they said go in and invade or go and bomb, uh, that he kept his own counsel and the counsel of those closest to him. Well, that's true. That story is true. But what people don't sometimes recognize about the link between the Bay of Pigs and the Cuban Missile Crisis is how those 18 months intervening led to those 13 days. Uh, immediately after the Bay of Pigs, in fact, the day after the Bay of Pigs invasion ended, this is April 20th of 1961, John Kennedy did a number of important things. He, one was he uh, put together a commission led by Lyndon Johnson to look into ways to put a man on the moon. That one worked out pretty well. Another one... Is that in part attributable to the Bay of Pigs? Absolutely. He was looking for a victory. He needed a victory over, over uh, the Soviets. So the same day he does that, then he also appoints a task force in the Pentagon to look into ways to hold back communism in Southeast Asia, South Vietnam, uh, which had really been a back burner issue until this day. Uh, but that task force is appointed, it comes back a week later, it, and suggests putting in more advisors into Vietnam. And this is really the first step in the escalation to Vietnam. And thirdly, what he does that day is he appoints a task force in the Pentagon to look into ways to overthrow Fidel Castro. Rather than back off of trying to overthrow Castro, his reaction was to double down, to go back. So while the Pentagon's looking into ways to overtly throw Castro, uh, Bobby Kennedy becomes the point man for a covert operation called Operation Mongoose to find covert ways to overthrow Castro. There's a lot of sabotage, assassination plots, um, all sorts of mayhem. Uh, now the problem is that Castro knew about Operation Mongoose. He knew about all these plans to overthrow him and to kill him. How, how did he know that? He knew because, he, because everyone, every Cuban exile in Miami knew and Castro had spies yeah. in Miami. So uh, he had no trouble knowing all the details. Yeah. He knew a lot about the Bay of Pigs invasion prior to it being launched as well. Yeah. Yeah. Khrushchev knew about uh, Mongoose. Khrushchev also, Castro has suggested in interviews that Khrushchev knew about the Pentagon planning as well, that there was a Pentagon plan to overthrow Castro, uh, at least a contingency plan. So the point is that Castro and Khrushchev had every reason to believe that John Kennedy was trying, was continuing to try to overthrow Fidel Castro because he was. Uh, so it, it makes you, even though what, what Khrushchev did obviously was, was reckless and dangerous, um, it didn't come out of nowhere. He felt provoked that he was going to lose Cuba to the United States if he didn't do something about it. Um, so that's, you know, it, it, Kennedy, I think, you know, we can compliment him for his behavior during the 13 days, but he was somewhat complicitous in the circumstances that led to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Is that a point which has been not exactly lost in the welter of history, but been downplayed? Well, it has been. And, and part of that is the early histories didn't know about Operation Mongoose. The, the historians didn't know about it. So that those 18 months were kind of a blank. Nobody really understood how much the Kennedys had been provoking Khrushchev and Castro. Uh, now, a lot has come out in the intervening years about Operation Mongoose, but what's incredible to me is how, even though it's in history books now, uh, it still gets downplayed. I mean, still the story about the Cuban Missile Crisis is always about those 13 days and, and um, Kennedy's uh, wise behavior during that. Um, but I, I'm still surprised that it hasn't gotten more attention. Uh, from, from historians who really know the facts, uh, because it's really indisputable. You, uh, and by the way, it's, it's, it's the same thing, you, set of circumstances you have to think about when you start talking about Kennedy's assassination, this provocation of 
of Castro and the Soviet Union. And the Kennedy administration didn't really want that information out, obviously, because they didn't want it to look like Kennedy was provoking Castro that might have set up a circumstance where Castro would try, as Lyndon Johnson once said, uh, I think his phrase was something like, he knew that Kennedy was trying to get him, so he came and got him first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not to say that Castro did that, but but th but you can you know there's a, there's a logic to these things. The Kennedys were very provocative. They were very aggressive after the Bay of Pigs. Uh, they had been not only you know had the country been hurt, but they the Kennedy name had been hurt, and they fought back relentlessly. And I think you could argue uh, a bit recklessly. Yeah. So. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.